Today, we are going to discuss about the second subject in biblical spirituality, that is Bible intake. We often talk about Bible study. I think the word Bible intake is more apt because it includes not only studying the Bible, but also meditating the scripture. So let's, first of all, today, uh, look at why Bible is so important for the Christian life. Now, I want us to uh, see two main reasons why Bible is so critical in our life. Number one, Bible says that we are born again through scripture. The scripture is so important because it is the means which God uses to bring about new birth. Look at, look at uh, with me, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. This is what we read. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Look at that word. You've been, not a, you've been born again through the living and enduring word of God. It is a scripture that tells us who God is. God is holy and righteous judge. He will judge humanity one day, once and for all. It is a scripture that tells us who we are. We are sinners. We are dead in sin and trespasses. We are dead spiritually. We deserve judgment for our rebellion against God. It is a scripture that tells us who Jesus is. His God incarnate who lived a perfect life for us. He lived a perfect life to earn righteousness for us. Not only he lived a perfect life to earn righteousness for us and fully obedient to the law, but he also went to the cross to bear our debts, to bear our guilt, to bear our punishment so that we can be redeemed, that we can be saved. It is a scripture that tells us that the only way to be saved is to repent from our sins and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And that is the gospel. God uses this gospel, this scripture to change us. God gives us new birth through his gospel. God gives us a new heart through the word of God, through the gospel, by the Holy Spirit. Christian life begins with the scripture. Why scripture is so important? Yes, God, God gives us a new life through the scripture. Not only God gives us a new life through the scripture, reason number two, we are sustained through scripture. Scripture is the means that God uses to sustain and nourish us in our Christian life. We see that in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, the first Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Peter says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Look at that phrase, pure spiritual milk. Pure spiritual milk refers to the word of God. Just as an infant desires the milk that is necessary for his growth, so we too should crave for a regular diet of God's word in order to mature as Christian. That's the reason we call it as Bible intake, a regular diet of God's word. Our progress in sanctification depends on our Bible intake. Friends, you cannot grow even an inch spiritually without the Word of God. Just as we need a regular diet to keep us physically healthy, so we should also feed daily on God's Word for the sake of our spiritual health. The food we consume with our mouth satisfies us temporarily. 
but learning of God from his word has got eternal value. The scripture is so important in our lives. Without scripture, there is no Christian life. There is no Christian. There is no growth. There is no Christianity without scripture. So we looked at two reasons why scripture is so important. We saw, yes, we are born again through the scripture. And we are sustained through the scripture. Now I want us to look at uh, okay, how we should approach the scripture. How should we approach the word of God? What kind of heart do we need to receive the word of God? How should we approach the word of the living God? So if you wanted to receive the word, then you need to approach the word of God with a respectful heart. Think a minute. What is the scripture? Please understand. It is the revelation of God who has created everything and sustains it. It is creator's words. Therefore, it will be always true. And it will be always sufficient and authoritative. We are not to approach the Bible in a careless manner. You need to be very serious when you approach the scripture. Look at how Thessalonians approach the scripture. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. This is what we read. And we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, heard from the apostles, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Those believers in Thessalonica accepted the word of God not as the word of men, but as the very word of God. If you cannot accept it as the very word of God, there is no point in reading it. It is, not an, it is not an issue when you want to read the scripture. Time is not an important thing, but it is a serious matter of how you read the word of God. You need to read God's word with a respectful heart, friends. Not only with a respectful heart, you need to approach the scripture with a humble heart. You should be willing to submit yourselves to God's word. Like the parable of the sower. Remember in Matthew chapter 13. Your heart should be a good soil. When, when the seed of the word is sown in such a heart. It takes root and bears fruit pleasing to God. Look at what James says. James chapter 1, we read, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives wisdom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, James says, he'll be blessed in what he does. Bible reading is not just for increasing our knowledge about God and his works. The primary purpose of Bible reading, Bible study, meditate, meditation is to have a changed life. A changed mind leads to a changed life. The purpose of our salvation is that we should be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. Likeness of Jesus Christ. It means that our lives need to be changed and be more like Jesus Christ. Look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 8. 
And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Look at the next verse. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many others. Yes, friends, transforming our lives is to be more like Jesus Christ requires that we need to go before God's word with a prayer. Anytime, every time when you go before God's word, we need to go with prayer. With a heart of respect and humility so that we will see changes happening in our lives for the glory of God. So, the question is this, how do you go before God's word? Do you go before God's word on a regular basis? Does sin hinder you so that you do not want to meditate on the word? How do you go before God's word? What is your attitude when you spend time in the scripture? Do you approach the word? Realizing that it is the word of God who is the creator and sustainer of everything. Do you give respect to God that is due unto him? Do you approach the word with a submissive heart that you are willing to obey by the help of the Holy Spirit? Friends, it is my prayer that you will go before the word with a proper attitude. May our true and living God bless all of us. Thank you.